Well, you're never too old for a pony ride No, you're never too old for a pony ride No, you're never too old for a pony ride No, you're never too old for a pony ride well, they're kind of like a horse, but they're smaller. A giraffe is like a pony, but his neck is taller. If you want to ride, just give me a holler. All rides are a dollar. Well, you're never too old for a pony ride Oh, you're never too old for a pony ride Oh, you're never too old for a pony ride No, you're never too old for a pony ride Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, David. Good evening, Scott. Good evening, Jesus. Hey, Roy. How you doing, Roy? Roy's a great name. Hello, Roy. <coughs> hey, Alan. Hey, Johnny. Hey, it's a crying shame. Yes, that's one of mine. <laughs> um... I have I have something cool to show you guys. Um, I think that you'll you'll dig these, and I'm I'm excited about it because uh, I discovered something. Do you you guys remember the tomato experiment at the beginning of 2020? Beginning of 2020, I did the the tomato tropical tomato experiment. Like, hey, let's see, let's see what we can plant. Let's see if we can plant a whole bunch of different varieties from Baker Creek Seed, and we'll we'll make a whole bunch of different beds. We'll treat them all the same. We'll take as good a care of them as we can. We'll start them from seeds right in the beds. And we'll see which varieties do well in the tropics. What can handle the heat? What can handle the diseases, the bugs, you know, the wilt? So in that experiment, um, one of the varieties that I tried was called Carbon. And I discovered that carbon did quite well in the equatorial tropics. So I planted carbon again here this spring. I started some seedlings of carbon because it had done so well for us. I thought, you know, yes, where every bed had its own name. Where every bed has its own name. Isn't that the Cheers theme song? So I, uh, I, I decided, well, if it did so well in the tropics, Let's try it again here. Let's see how it does. So I did. So I said, well, it was a winner there. Will it be a winner in Alabama? Well, let me show you this thing. That right there, that is a carbon tomato. And carbon has this weird tendency. <laughs> Look at that tomato. It has this weird tendency to do this multiple bloom thing and then make this bizarre, weird, long scar across the top. And it's and it's almost like a com you know, a composite tomato. Look at that tomato. Okay. Wow. That's a tomato right there. That is a carbon tomato. And carbon often has this green on the top and this kind of it's a, it's it's not really a black tomato. I don't know why they call it carbon, because it's I don't know. I mean, it's got a little bit of grayishness to it. It it looks a little more like maybe graphite, but now I compare this here. This is like a big boy tomato. Okay, they are side by side. This is your standard, you know, Bonnie's plants transplant tomato. This is a very nice, classic hamburger slicing tomato, and this thing is a distorted, disgusting monster. But it tastes fantastic now I'm gonna give you another comparison here this is an Everglades tomato <laughs> this is a let's look at the side by side 
Okay, so if we're gonna take that that theory, what's that theory that things are revolving around other things that so many people seem to believe in? You know, the universe, there's like things revolving around other things and then this one's like revolving around another thing and then this thing's revolving, you know, whatever. I'm kind of a geocentrist myself, but it's because I think Earth is awesome. Um, but it, it is interesting um, to see that the, the carbon variety has done so well here. But, you know, all the tomatoes I've planted so far have done well, which is surprising. Well, it's funny, you know, it may be, Karen, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's it's feeling a little, it's feeling soft down here, and I usually do it by feel. So I thought, well, I'll pull it in. But anyhow, um, maybe I'll leave the next one longer and see if it gets any darker. <laughs> Checking in. That's nice. That's very good. Hello, Central Texas. But the, the carbon has a very nice flavor. It's a little richer flavor. You know? Um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's got something. It's got a little extra something to it. Maybe it's the, yeah, flat tomato theory. That's right. <laughs> hey, Karen. Hey, Joe. Hey, Hugh. Um, hey, Brett. Skippy. It's nice to see you guys. So, um, there was another thing. Hello, Carolyn. Carolyn, I'm glad you're here this evening. I was kind of waiting for you to show up. Um, I wanted to say thank you because, you know, now, now you've seen that I actually do have chickens. I wanted to say thank you for when we first moved here for sending us a series of little super chats and saying, here, get some chickens. David, go get some chickens. David, go get some chickens. This is for the chicken fund, the chicken fund, the chicken fund. You, you convinced me to just go ahead and make it happen. So... We did it. We put in our, you know, I, I paid for the wire. I bought the birds. I raised the birds up. I made a little brooder out of an old bin, uh, a horse watering bin. Okay. I did it. And it's you. It's your fault. And I'm, I'm greatly enjoying having the chickens again, really. Um, and, and feeling like I'm recycling everything from the garden. It's like, it's not a waste. That's an ugly looking cabbage. Boop. Off to the chickens. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> Aaron says, this video has been removed for violating cosmology standards. That's right. Brett says, the second best tomato to grow in Florida, anyone? Good question. After Everglades tomato, I would try carbon. It's doing pretty well here. But, uh... oh, Carolyn, the children, the little the little ones in particular, absolutely love the chickens. My, my three-year-old and my one-and-a-half-year-old, they want to go out with me and see the chickens every day, sometimes multiple times a day. My, my one and a half year old will stand by the door and go, chick, 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 like this. I'm like, oh, you want to go see the chickens? So she could say, chick, and she could say, rooster. That's rooster. She'll go, rooster. <laughs> so it's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. She loves it. There's another thing. Okay. Um, I did that bean video the other day. And this comment, I think, has to be the most perfect obnoxious comment that I have seen in a long time. It hits everything. And it was in it actually, I, I actually laughed out loud when I read it. And I was like, I'm totally sticking that in the next good stream because it's, it's perfect. Okay, ready? Joe Schmo writes, you seem like you have an extremely annoying personality and the music in this video was pretty cringy. Hoping I can at least scavenge some useful knowledge. Doubt it, though. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, that one was so good. I'm like, I'm screen capping that one. Hoping I can at least scavenge. You're not gonna get any useful knowledge watching me plant giant beans. I don't even know what they are. So, dude, your doubt is well founded, Joe. As for the extremely annoying personality, I don't know how everybody puts up with it. Um, the music, okay, the music that was sugar. <laughs> the music was sugar pie. It's pretty cringy. Ooh, sugar pie. Okay, buddy, but but the, <laughs> the I don't care if you don't like the music or my personality. The last lines. <laughs> Hoping I can at least scavenge some useful knowledge. Doubt it though. <laughs> I don't know why that struck me as so funny. <coughs> um, but the uh, you seem 
when you see somebody saying you seem, you immediately know, uh, okay, it seems like, it seems like, no, it seems is a, that's not a good thing. Um, <laughs> okay, either have an extremely annoying personality. <laughs> you, you seem, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why that's so funny to me. Um, <clears throat> but... <laughs> Joe Schmo, do do do. Thanks for making me laugh. Oh my gosh. Um. Anyhow, <clears throat> you seem you seem like you have an extremely irritating person. You seem like it. It's, it should be obvious. If it's extremely irritating, it's definitely obvious. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Bradley's Adventure says, what is the best? Okay, we're going to answer gardening questions. It's time to answer gardening questions. Okay, here we go. What is the best fertilizer for peppers? Pretty much you want to get something that's balanced. When they're young, you can give them a little bit of nitrogen. A little bit of nitrogen until they start to put on blooms. When they start to put on blooms, you drop the nitrogen. You give them something else, dude. One of the best things for peppers, I think, is a slow release thing like compost. If you got plenty of compost in your pepper bed and they get irrigated regularly, you're gonna have lots and 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 lots of peppers. But peppers are touchy. You gotta make sure they're well fed, make sure you water that bed because things are crazy. Especially the bells. Bells are terrible peppers. The worst pepper ever invented, but it's the only pepper that a lot of people want to grow. Joe? Um, <clears throat> yeah, stay balanced. Don't give them too much nitrogen later on. Um, you want basically a fruit and root type of a fertilizer. Any fertilizer that's made for um, tomatoes would be good on peppers. And if you're going to mix your own, um, I would give them a little bit of ashes. A little bit of ashes, some banana peels. Um, you know, if you could find banana peels, put them around your peppers right when you put them in. Um, and also, um, they like coffee grounds. Give them a little bit of Epsom salts. Give them a good handful of bone meal around the base. They love that. They also love fish emulsion and fish guts. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've got a cold right now. <laughs> Brett says, carbon tomato seeds on the way. Order them from David's Seeds on Amazon. It's not this David, but any David that can... Yeah, it's fantastic. Hey, Nancy, nice to see you. Yes, having a great evening. I actually was going to do this earlier, but uh, it's so dry. I was standing out there in the garden holding the hose. Watering and watering and watering and watering and watering and watering. Okay. The overworked gardener says, what's up, you crazy guy? Uh, right now, I'm just waiting for the rain to come again so I can plant some stuff. I've got some cool trellises that I'm making. I'm going to film and show you those trellises. Um, I am going to be putting some more sweet potatoes around as soon as possible, and I am experimenting with fertigating with buckets right now. <clears throat> Have I ever used the flower shotgun shells? No, I have not. Um, I mean, I've used regular shotgun shells. Uh, my my son blasted a uh, moccasin the other day with a shotgun. But no, I have not used the flower shotgun shells. I like the idea. It's fun. I, I, made, um, I made, you know, those seed bombs, clay balls, seed balls, like, uh, like uh, Masanobu Fukuoka used. Um, and I, I had fun with my old food forest in North Florida, throwing those things all over it. And, but they weren't particularly, they didn't work all that well for me. Um, the weeds tended to overwhelm them. <laughs> Beth says all creative free thinkers are irritating to people who just want to sleep. That's funny. Ian says zone nine B, what kind of fertilizer would you buy or make for peaches? Any tips are appreciated. Thank you. Um, Peaches basically like a regular old balanced fertilizer. So 10, 10, 10, triple 13, that's good. But I would not give them just that. 
They really also like uh, organic matter and mulch. Now the problem is, is if your peaches start to get um, drilled, like they, they get drilled into the peaches, the plum curculios get in there or something like that, the mulch is then no good um, because those the beetles tend to overwinter in the debris underneath the peach trees. So some of the commercial peach people, they don't have any mulch on them. They grow better with mulch, except if you get an infestation, in that case, you may have to rake your mulch up and and get rid of it. Um, run chickens around them. You know, having having chickens that run regularly around your fruit trees is actually really good for them because they eat all the little pests that are in the ground. Um, the fastest peach that I ever saw grow was fed with composted cow manure and composted chicken manure and the woman that owned it left her hose dripping on it through the summer every other day she just had the hose on a drip 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 at one edge of the the peach where she planted it and that thing grew to you know from like five foot to 12 foot and and had a caliper from maybe one inch to easily three inches in one year i have never seen a peach grow like that before but it was that slow release there's that slow release of manure if you could get it but the problem is of course as we always talk about the you know the issues with um amino pyrrolid contamination of manure sometimes the manure will kill your plant and you don't want that <clears throat> but if you stick a bucket with a drill hole in it and you pour a half a gallon of urine in the bucket and like like we're talking a hole that's like an eighth of an inch, right? Like just a pinprick nail, a nail hole maybe. Um, you put that at the base of your, your peach tree and you pour in like a half a jug of urine and you fill the bucket the rest of the way up with water and you let it trickle on there and you do that every three days or so, it will grow crazy. Um, if that's too weird for you, you can also just take a little bit of any kind of soluble fertilizer, throw it in there. Um, if you have chicken manure, make a manure tea out of it. If you have comfrey leaves, you can let the comfrey leaves rot down, make weed tea, make Dave's fitted swamp water, whatever. The idea is, is that you're giving it a weak fertilizer solution as it's being watered and it's trickling around the root base and that'll make them grow like crazy. Yeah, Joe says, I'd ask you how to compost, but you'd probably chastise me until you... Yeah, you know, it's really funny because I get these questions sometimes. Have you ever heard of composting? Have you ever heard of fugal culture? Yes. Yes, I have. Yes, bell peppers too. Bell peppers actually take our, our higher demand than hot peppers. Hot peppers need less care. I am doing very well, the overworked gardener, and I would very happily take some of your rain if you could send it. Hey, Sue says, can I do banana peels in coffee grounds after they're growing or something else better? Yes. Okay, if they're already a foot tall, you want something that's going to hit them faster. Um, if you make a compost tea, a manure tea, if you have a balanced nutrient solution of any sort. See, the best is to have compost in the ground, have banana peels in the ground or even buried underneath it. Um, you know, coffee grounds, bone meal, a little bit of lime, all that stuff, like before it's really actively growing. When it's a foot tall, you need something that's going to hit it fast because it's getting ready to bloom and everything. So I would just give it 10, 10, 10, triple 13, or um, like a little bit. <clears throat> um, if you water it with some diluted urine, they really like that. If you have compost tea, it'll really like that. You want something that's going to hit it fast, something liquid. Um, now, <laughs> if, you, if you have made a soup, out of a bunch of materials, you know, like if you took a bunch of bean leaves and you boiled them into a soup and you cooled it off and poured it on it, it would love that too. But um, that's like really fast. Do I ever play around with fungal inoculants? Um, not really. I have, I have, when I've planted new trees, found other trees that were happy and healthy and then dug up some of the dirt around the base of them. And when I planted them, Transplanted some of that dirt with it. Dump it in. <clears throat> Laura says, David, my cukes look like they are dying. I've got two big crops. Should I just remove them and plant more in zone 9A? Yeah, often the cucumbers burn out. Um, they burn out and they just decide that's it, I'm done. 
this happens. Uh, you really can only expect, at least in my experience, it's about a month of good production from cucumbers, maybe two if you're really lucky. But it's usually maybe no more than a month and a half. Bradley's Adventures says, so yes, you could plant again, but it's getting a little late in the year for it. You might plant them again in the fall. Bradley's Adventure says, can I grow pineapples in Ohio? Yes, pineapples actually grow really well in pots. So if you start pineapple tops in pots, don't overwater them. <clears throat> Plant them, you know, strip the strip the fruit off of the bottom of it, peel it back a little bit. I should show people how to do that, actually. How to plant a pineapple top and grow your own pineapple. Um, but you can just plant it in a pot and it will grow and it will fruit for you if you keep it from freezing. So pull it into, you know, put it on your porch or something like that. They're not going to die um, if they don't get enough sun. They don't like it, but you can keep them in pots. And usually in about two years, they'll make some pineapples for you. And then they usually make a pineapple a year. Gypsy says, Northeast Alabama getting lots of rain right now. Kitty pool overflowing. Yeah, we got nothing down here. Dry, dry, dry. Esther says, one question. I have tons of leaves. Can you over-fertilize plants with leaf mold? No, you can't. Um, you can add lots and lots of humus to the soil. You can grow plants in pure leaf mold, and they'll do just fine. <clears throat> What's a reputable place to get Everglades tomatoes? Good question. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. Um, I got mine from Karen Hill, so I guess Karen was my reputable place. Probably the DTGG group. Uh, the David the Good Groupies group on Facebook, um, they're probably trading seeds. I don't know. I'm not on Facebook, but they're there. Hey, Suki. Nice to see you. Hey, Boyd. Hey, Tirza. Tirza says, Mr. Good, if you paid for a cold, hardy pomegranate and they sent you a little tree with a 90-degree bend near soil surface, would you believe them when they say it will grow out? Eh... Mm, probably not. I've had some pretty lousy experiences with some mail order nurseries, but it may. It might. I mean, if you're if you're nice enough to any plant, you can often keep it alive. But um, also, don't trust that it's going to be cold hardy for the first couple of years. The cold hardiness seems to increase significantly as they get older. The first few years, you might want to prep them. You know, take care of them some more. Let's see, where are we? Garden Gates open says dry. Oh my gosh, we got eight, 17 inches of rain in the last five weeks. We're waterlogged. Wow, but I'm not complaining. The lake is filling up. Well, that's good. Cassie says source of the urine, um, homemade. <clears throat> I have not tried the Ellen White planting method. David says, are you going to chop and drop your sorghum sudan crass, till it in, compost it, or something else? I'm going to chop and drop it. I'm going to actually chop it and carry it and use it as mulch in some of my beds. And um, I'm hoping to have enough to make compost with too, but I'll probably end up just using it all for mulch because I don't think I'm going to have enough. It's been so dry as it's trying to get established. It's not looking that hot right now. So hopefully it runs. Where can you buy comfrey? I got comfrey in the past from Richter's Herbs. Richter's. Uh, up in Canada. <laughs> Scott says my bell peppers are whiny little wimps. Yeah, they are. They're wimps. IH says, can I keep adding to my swamp water or let it finish? How do I know if it's turned bad? It has fish guts in it. It doesn't turn bad. It, you can just let it rot forever. It doesn't matter. Um, there's a lot of nutrients that stay in it. Uh, the Koreans actually, in their Korean natural farming methods, they think that the longer it ferments, the better it gets. <clears throat> so I, I wouldn't worry about it. Johnny says, when will you release the gardening ASMR videos? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about doing one for digging and I ended up making an April Fool's instead. Bigger Smiles in Asia says, hey David, any tips on planting during rainy season in Cambodia? Uh, yes. I would pay attention to what the local farmers are doing and do that. First of all, I would find out what local people are doing and do what they're doing. Imitate first and then understand later. Like children. You know, that's how your kids do it. They imitate the sounds that you make. They imitate your actions. Later, they understand why things work the way they do. You know, um, but 
uh, rainy season is an awesome time. It's the best time in the tropics to plant your fruit trees. So, you know, take advantage of that rainy season to get, even if you don't get any um, annual gardens in, to plant as many fruit trees as possible because they don't need irrigation. <clears throat> Boyd says, how, how many times do I cut, will I cut back the sorghum Sudan grass and how do I plan to terminate it? I'd like to do something similar. I think that the freezes will terminate it. Um, I will cut it as many times as I can. I don't know how it cuts and grows. I'm not sure if it grows back well or what. I'm going to experiment. It's the first time I've ever grown it, so I don't really have many answers on it yet. Dwayne says, hey, David, does city water hurt or slow the growth of your plants with a little chlorine and fluoride? I believe it does. Um, it's better than having no water. Unfortunately, right now, I don't have a good way to get the water from the pond out to my gardens to irrigate with, or I would do that, but I'm working on some solutions. I'm thinking of buying a submergible uh, trash pump, basically, so I could pump up pond water and spray it across the gardens. I think that would be awesome. But um, right now, well, you know, it's, it's better than no water. But they have done experiments, and they show that the... Uh, the chlorine definitely decreases um, plant growth. It's not good for them, but it's better than not watering. Would I ever grow mushrooms? Yeah, possibly. I just don't like to grow them that much. I I did experiment a little bit with growing mushrooms in a bucket once, and I failed at it. Um, I usually just forage for wild ones. I am trying to hear you. Yeah, buried a mouse under a pineapple crown one fine afternoon. That's good. Ziggy says, when are you moving back to Florida, David? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm happy here right now. I think the price of everything is super stinking expensive. Um, And my, my hometown in Florida is all city now. I don't want to be there. I kind of like it up here where, you know... I can go out in the backyard and shoot guns and, um, I mean, it's like nobody bugs me. And, I mean, you barely even know there was, like, a pandemic or anything going on around here. It's just, like, all small town, slow. I like it. I like not being in that pressure. Um, I lived in the city for quite a while, and I just, pfft. There were other parts of Florida that I really love. I love Polk County, um. I have friends and family there, but um, I kind of like it here, too. Nice thing about being here is that uh, I'm not close to hardly anybody I know, so I don't have to, I don't have, a, like, a ton of social obligations. <laughs> Any good source for broken clay pots? Yes. Um, call your local pottery studios. That's where I got a box of them. I'm trying to get it. Uh, thank you, Esther. Am I ever going to release a music album? Yeah, I, I released a few in the past when I was younger. I need to, um, I need to put one together. I just haven't done it. It's, it's, it's not really the, it's not the best use of my time in general. I mean, I like doing it, but I, I just have a feeling if I put an album together, it might sell 50 to 100 copies, and it would take me a long time to, to get it all together. I mean, I could just do a compilation album, you know, like a double album of all the crazy gardening music, but I mean, if I was going to do a serious album, and it would take me quite a bit of time, and it's like, I'm usually better off writing a book. I should do it, though. Hugh says, most municipal water authorities try to have almost no chlorine by the time it gets to your tap. Well, that's good to know. I may have done a pineapple one. It gets to a point where I've done over... 
a thousand. Okay, cool. Southern exposure. I mean, I've done over a thousand videos, so I start to forget what I've done. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange has Everglades tomato seeds for sale. That's good. You know, they also sell Grow or Die, my book. Are dried out corn husks and stalks good for mulching and compost? Yes. They take their time to break down, but they're, so they're really good for mulch. Really good for mulch. I like them. <laughs> Urea plant food. Yes. Laura says, any preventative measure for tomato hornworms beside a blowtorch? Yes. Keeping a really good eye, eye on the leaves. When you see eggs on the leaves, underneath the leaves, around the leaves, anywhere on the leaves, you need to get those eggs off right away because the, the hornworms grow very fast and eat very fast. So your best prevention is inspection. Any tips for growing blueberries in 10B? Well, no. <clears throat> you might have luck with some of the most southern of the southern high bush varieties, but in that climate, I would just switch. Um, you can grow anything from the tropics down there. So I would grow Jabuticaba. I would grow black Suriname cherry. I would grow Grumichama. I would grow guavas. I would grow Jamaican cherry. Um, I would I would plant all that bounty of the tropics and not worry about what I can't grow. You can also grow mulberries down there. Mulberries are fantastic. There's so many things you can grow that are delicious um, from the tropics that I, I would just say, blueberries, I mean, ah, whatever. I mean, blueberries are nice, but um, there's really a lot of really good small fruit that you can grow down there. Teresa said, did I stunt slash poison my bush beans using herbicide contaminated straw for mulch? They still haven't recovered since replacing it with leaf mulch. Everything else is doing well in the same bed. Yeah, they're dead. Once they take that stuff up uh, and they start to curl, they can no longer grow new leaves well at all. They just won't grow out of it. They just die. Um, they'll sit there, they'll sit there, they'll sit there, they'll sit there for months without growing. I would just tear them out and try again. <clears throat> I'm sorry. A.T. Claremont says, do you dilute Dave's fitted swamp water before putting on plants? How long to let sit and brew? No, I don't dilute it. I just pour it all over things. Um, I don't usually make it really strong. Like, like if I had a bunch of chicken manure or something in it, I, I would thin it out. But usually it's a bunch of weeds. It's a bit of chicken manure, maybe a bit of urine, maybe a bit of Epsom salts, maybe some fish guts, whatever I have around. But there's 55 gallons there, you know, so there's a lot of water in it, too. Um... I have never had a problem with it burning anything. I did thin it, though, when I put in buckets of uh, chicken manure and made like a, um, a really thick manure tea out of it. I usually let it sit and rot for about two weeks. <clears throat> Knockman says, Edible Acres had some tips for setting up a solar pump on a budget. Oh, well, that's good. Yes, a gas-powered pump would be easy. A gas-powered or an electric power. I could have to run a really long cable. You know, <laughs> like 500 feet of cable. But Yeah, end of hose water filters. I don't know. With how much it spray through, would that really work? Have a good night, Lynn. How do you transport all your children? We have four, and my hubby is already joking about getting a bus. I have a 2006 Ford Econoline van that I love. Um, you know, those big Ford Econolines, they, they seat 13. It's fantastic. And they, they run nice. It's like having a truck. Nobody messes with you. No, Like, I never get pulled over. It's the most boring vehicle. Big white van. It looks like a church bus. It's great. And it's not a bus. I mean, it's just a big just a big van. It's nice. It's, it's just got the same engine as the truck. It's good stuff. <clears throat> Joe says, I'm planting cabbage or other brassicas for the rainy season here. Our temperatures are 80 to 84 average. Some humidity. Would it be wiser to plant until fall? No. 80 to 84 is fine for them. They ought to do okay. No problem.
The Learning Journey with Sam says, Hi, David. I'd like to hear your thoughts on aquaculture. Well, um, I mean, if you're raising fish and plants or or anything in a big pond and it doesn't take you a lot of infrastructure to do it, I'm, I'm in favor of it. You can grow a lot of food in, in a body of water. If I have a pond and if it's tropical, I could really grow a lot because I could put water spinach in there and water chestnuts and all kinds of stuff. Further north, there's less you can grow. Some of the you know, some, some things are, there's minor edibles that grow around ponds, but in that case, you know, you can put a lot of fish in it. You can just stock it and get fish when you need them, let them grow up in there. Um, I think aquaculture is a good idea, but I don't like um, aquaponics with all the pumps and filters and trying to keep fish alive and growing little beds of lettuces and stuff. I think it's a bunch of nonsense. <clears throat> I don't like it very much. Too much work. Uh, David said, I cut my sor sorghum sudan grass down to six inches every time it reaches three to four feet about every three weeks. Oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> YouTube says, why is this video a good recommendation? Entertaining, useful, informative, calming, novel, or other... That's good. Yeah, all the above, right? Uh, beyond the Chaya, do you have any plans to bring some of your vote zone pushers? Not exactly sure. I did zone pushing plants, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I would like to. The problem is renting here. I haven't been able to get... There's no gutter on the back of the house. And I want to gutter, but the landlord's not that interested in it. Um, if there was a gutter, so the, the back of the house did not get pounded. Plus, if there was more sunshine on the south side of the house, I would I would zone push some stuff back there. That's my favorite place. I'm going to have a greenhouse. Um, but I don't want to work too hard here to, to push much. I will be just putting some large potted plants in the greenhouse, like a jabuticaba. I want to see if I can get a, um, a potted mango and some other stuff. Scott says, if I do the music album, he'll do a Texas book. All right, Scott, I will do the music album just to get you to do the Texas book. You better be serious, man. Because I will do it. I will drop what I'm doing and do an album to get you to do that Texas book. I want to publish your book. Mangai Dude says, I leave an active wasp nest near my garden and they control all my caterpillars. That's the way to do it. Alex relates, tomato hornworms glow in the dark under a black light at night. I've heard that. That is so awesome. I have not tried that yet and I have to do it. I gotta get a black light. It's definitely too late to plant potatoes in Texas, right? To ask the questions to know the answers, Zachary. Yes, it's definitely too late. Jewel says, David, with solar minimum, would you start fall or winter crops earlier? I'm in Florida 9B. Uh, I don't know that it's hitting yet. Right? We seem to be in some sort of a, a weather transition. Um, and it's swinging. It's swinging around. We don't know if it's going to be <clears throat> colder or warmer any particular winter at this point. It's like trying to distinguish the noise in the stock market. The trading from day to day doesn't really necessarily show you the trend. You have to look at a longer patch and a longer patch to try and understand the trends and where things are going. At this point, um, I mean, I plant stuff from warmer zones and from colder zones because I'm not exactly sure which way it's going to go. And I do a lot of my planting from seed. So I, you know, if I think it might be a little colder, I don't know, but I would plant a little earlier and see what happens. And then if those, it's too hot for them, I would try again. I would just keep going. Um, thank you, Scott. Scott says, fill up the tip jar, folks. Chicken's got to eat. Yeah, I could use some chicken feed. Yeah, it's funny how fast they eat. My gosh. Even with all those cabbages. I'm like, just eat the cabbages. No, we want chicken feed. No, we want chicken feed. I don't know. And thank you very much, Zachary. Also for the $5 super chat. That's almost up to a bag of feed there. <laughs> thank you. 
both of you. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> David says, uh, okay, oh no, it's about the water. Yeah. Liberty Not License says, Sour Stop is my favorite discovery here. Oh, that is a great, that is a great, great fruit. It is so good. Scott makes a good point. Zachary, it is perfect timing for sweet potatoes, though. Yes, absolutely. CC says, question about psyllid damage on tomatoes. My tomatoes are all curling and it's not herbicide damage. My beans are all fine. Little black aphid looking things, but not aphid. Dark veins on plant and curling. Um, yep, it sounds about right. Um, you can, there's a few things you can do. I mean, you can take just a weak soap solution, a little bit of dish soap and water and mist it. And sometimes that'll knock them out. Sometimes you, you know, throw a little essential oils in there, throw a little uh, hot pepper in there. Um, if you boil a few cigar butts, that actually works quite well um, with a drop of soap. I have a video on making nicotine insecticide. It works, it works very well. Or you could just, you know, get something like Spinosad. Spinosad will knock out most stuff. I just, you know, I would just use it um, not during the day when it's going to hit bees or butterflies and that kind of thing. Carolyn says, crushed eggshells thrown around tomato plants keeps the hornworms at bay. I don't know about that. I think the hornworms are up on the plants. I'm not sure how that would keep them. Um, Nicholas says, have you ever tried to grow papayas as an annual? Yes, I have. I tried growing them in North Florida multiple times and they, right about the time they really started making fruit, they would freeze and die. So the way to do it is to grow them up in a pot the first year until they're pretty big. And then the next year, you know, like keep them in your greenhouse or keep them on your back porch or something until the next spring. And then plant them out and then they'll fruit for you all of that year and get running with it <laughs> charlie charlie says i'm in texas I, i'm in texas and i'm planting potatoes anyways booyah well good job charlie good luck <laughs> it's a little warm hopefully you're in north texas because they don't seem to like the warmth um karen thank you very much karen sends a ten dollar chicken feed fund <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Liberty License sends a super chat and says, three bucks for the overlords, seven for the good people. It's hard to be upset at my overlords. Look at they sent me a play button. I love big YouTube. Humpstead Healthy says, thanks, David. I've got blackberries and Barbados cherries going now. Oh, awesome. Both good. Laura is like, I need a black light. Why? Did you start doing mushrooms, Laura? Laura? I expect... Oh, 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 right. Oh, to find the hornworms. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, you can grow sweet potatoes in buckets. <clears throat> Here we go. Now I have to drop the album in conjunction with Scott's book. That's a great idea. Maybe I could put Scott's book to music. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Have a good night, Brett. What do you think about peanut grass as ground cover in Thailand? I'm not familiar with peanut grass. Is kudzu a good choice for chop and drop? Yeah, it's full of nitrogen. It's really good for uh, making weed tea too. Jonathan says, hey, David the Great, still trying to get that plum seed started in the fridge. Two questions. One, would chipping the seed help it go faster? Probably. If you can crack the seed coat, um, it will probably make it go faster. Hey, Craze Family Homestead. Good evening. Elderberry is great for chop and drop, David says. Sir David... Joe says, have you heard of or have a miracle fruit tree, shrub, or vine here? Its origin is in West Africa. Yes, I've, I've tried miracle fruit before. I'm not very good at growing them. I've killed them a couple of times. Um, I don't know. That seems like they need water. I actually have a little one in my backyard right now that's very small. Um, Joe, thank you very much, too, for the super chat. Equivalent of five bucks for the chicken fund. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Two gallons to the mile? No, I think it gets about 14. It's not bad. But I don't have to go very much. I'm not, like, gainfully employed or anything. I'm a writer. No, it doesn't, love cat. I painted over that. <clears throat> Charlie says, gosh, I need one of those three biological babies and three bonus. Oh, good work. Have a good night, Gypsy. Overwork Gardener says, my pawpaw trees are doing pretty good. I got five of them. Three of them are still correct. The other two, I think the goats ate past the graft, so who knows what pawpaw I'm getting. It'll be a seedling. It'll probably still be okay. Anon H says, read any books lately? Nonfiction? Uh, yeah, I'm reading a book called People of the Lie right now. Um, the Problem of Human Evil. It's... Um, I don't feel like his theological worldview was quite solid enough to really understand the depth of some evil, um, but the case studies in it are quite interesting, and I think he was on the right path, generally. But, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting book. I'm also reading um, Canterbury Tales by Chaucer in the original English, which is difficult. Um, I read a bit of it every evening, and you, you start to get the flow of it, but um, it's very, very archaic language. It's Middle English, so you have to almost read it out loud to understand chunks of it. But it's so good. <clears throat> Alan says, Pete just did a push the zone vid. Do you think Pete just like watches my stuff? He's probably secretly got like a closet full of my books. Simmons Buddy says, D to the G, you should try growing some duckweed for your chickens. You could use a kiddie pool. Yeah, I have done that, actually. I grew duckweed back in Florida a long time ago. Um, duckweed's great stuff. The Hive says, David, will my red lady papaya grow true to seed? I want to grow my own papaya from seed, but don't know if it'll come true. I see mixed results. Uh, I grew red papayas from seed. They did fine. It was like a Caribbean red or something. Uh, they are not true, true, but they're usually good. Sometimes you get a little teeny one, like one that makes small fruits. Can you start a seed from a partially dried plum or prune? Yes, probably. I've I've started um, seeds from dried dates, no problem. So long as they haven't been heated up to kill the uh, the interior. Ziggy Moon says, David, what is good to rid my lemon tree of bird poop caterpillar? I'd rather keep the butterflies, but these guys are eating my lemon leaves. Um, you can just pick them all off and throw them in soap water if you want to get rid of them. Those are swallowtails. They're so cute. So sad. But BT will knock them out really fast. You want to knock them all out? BT, Bacillium thuringiensis, knocks out the caterpillars. They stop eating like almost right away. Celeste says, do you recommend sweet potatoes in containers in Florida? You can if you want to. Like Scott said, they're better in the ground. They really like being in the ground. They don't mind bad soil. <clears throat> Let's see. What are your preferred soil amendments for heavy clay soil aside from compost? I like the deep mulch on top of it, um, but the first soil amendment I would add is gypsum to help flocculate the soil. Gypsum is a big help. It will loosen your soil immensely. Um, and then after that, I would just give it all the fertilizers and everything it needed. But uh, deep mulch will loosen it up a lot. But that, that gypsum, like, chemically loosens it. It's good. You need it. <laughs> I wonder how many silver dollars you can melt out of that play button. I think it's stainless steel, actually. I don't think it's real silver. <clears throat> love Cat says, love to everyone this evening. I'm chopping onions and grabbing phone for random puns. I thought it was just that I, you're just weeping with how great this stream is, but yeah, onions. Okay.
Shane says, David, I lay cardboard outside my chicken run. Every day, pick up the cardboard, grab all the worms, and throw them in the chicken run. Lay cardboard everywhere you can. I like that idea. <laughs> Canterbury Tales, not good. <laughs> there, there are some tales you might want to skip. Some of them are pretty good. Um, Rosium Farm says, soaking rotting hardwood in fitted swamp water overnight to put in the bottom of grape tomato pots. Too much? No, I think it's a great idea. It'll help balance out that extra carbon. The Hive says, David, what is your tactic for nematodes here near Tampa? And they are brutal. Yeah, they are brutal. Um, you know, this sounds terrible, but the best way to get rid of them is to not feed them anything. If you could strip it to bare sand and till it and just let them starve, put um, put down weed block over the whole area and just let it sit for, for like six months or so, it'll knock the population way down. If they have no plant roots to feed on, they die out eventually. Um, the other thing you could do is plant a mustard crop in the fall and till it under if you got a tiller till the mustard under they hate that um most brassica leaves but more compost helps and also planting things that are resistant to nematodes if they are mulberries with seeds even to begin with because many mulberries that people are growing are just female mulberries they have no seeds in them whatsoever but if they're mulberries with seeds you feed them to the birds that's great um, they should probably plant the seeds all over the place. They'll probably show up all over, but it may take a decade or more before you start getting mulberries. And some of them will be males, and males produce a lot of pollen, and many people are allergic to pollen. So there's the whole bunch of stuff there. Sounds like a song title, Flocculate. That's right. Chickens will flocculate your soil. Thank you, love cat. White flies on collards, why? Well, they're probably southern white flies. Sarah says, your videos make me smile. Live chats are strange to me. Hope your channel does well. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. It's nice of you. <clears throat> well, Chaucer was written in the 1300s. So whatever, I think it was 1300s, right? Whatever they were writing back then. Ziggy Moon says, um, do I know of a source for a big bag of gypsum? Yeah, if you wanted to order it, Seven Springs Farm. Seven Springs Farm has all kinds of amazing amendments. It's, it's dangerous, though. You'll end up with a pallet of stuff. SRQ says, powdery mildew on citrus. Can't seem to lose it even with copper. Um, if you're not losing it even with copper, I would try um, mixing a little bit of um, yogurt plain yogurt, mixed plain yogurt with rainwater, not chlorinated water, and mix it up really good to make a milky solution and then spray that all over it. It'll often knock it out. <clears throat> Karen, you're growing cherimoya. Good work. Two months. That's about right. They take a long time. Which of the two books, Seed to Seed by Suzanne Ashford, is the, is the correct one? There are two versions. I'm not sure. I'd get whatever the most recent edition is, probably. Uh, Jean-Francois says, Did you ever eat the fruit from Monstera Deliciosa? I live in Colombia, and they are all in fruit now. I have not eaten it. I'm a little nervous about that fruit. I've grown Monstera Deliciosa a couple of times. I had a nice couple of them in the tropics. They didn't fruit for me because I didn't get them big enough before I had to leave. But um, I'm a little nervous about them because they're so high in oxalic acid. If you get them at the wrong time, they'll you know they'll burn your tongue and your mouth and everything. And I seem to be pretty sensitive to um, to that in general. Like I've eaten the um, the boiled malanga leaves, and um, other people are eating it and they're like, "Oh, these are great." But me, my 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 jaw is stinging and it's terrible. I'm, I I really notice the you know, the effect of it. So um, I have not eaten it. I'm a little nervous to eat it. <clears throat> the Hive says, I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity, a very minor celebrity. 
Geechee says, what about caterpillars on ginger and banana? I've never had problems with caterpillars on gingers and bananas, but if you have them and you want to get rid of them, BT is what it's called. Scott says, David the Good, we have some trees that are putting out fruit right now, but ants got to the fruit. Is there anything you'd recommend to keep them off the trees? Yeah, uh, there's this stuff called Tanglefoot that was recommended to me. Um, you can put it around the trunks of the tree so the ants can't climb the tree anymore. You can blast all the ants off the tree with a hose and then put a little of this stuff around the base so they don't climb up. You can also just use um, uh, petroleum jelly. Put it around the base of the tree so the ants can't climb past it. You may have to reapply and you gotta be careful that there aren't any you know, grass, tall grass or something leaning against the tree where they can find their way up. Ed says, doctor said no more spinach and I crave it. Ed, yeah, spinach is no good. I don't even eat spinach. I don't even think spinach is a good food. Um, I don't care about Popeye. You know, that I, it's spinach is so high in oxalic acid. If you want kidney stones, make yourself some green smoothies with spinach. Everybody's like, I make these green smoothies. Like, you know plants are trying to defend themselves, right? Like, grazing on a little bit of something is one thing. A little bit of spinach, no big deal. Making a green smoothie with spinach, it's a bad idea. Um, I don't like it. Um, cooked, it's a better. But, you know, uh, like, that's ah, not a good idea. Um, now, if you're craving greens, there are brassicas. Most of the brassicas are low in oxalic acid. I would look for any of the greens that are really low in oxalic acid. Some of them are very low in it. Um, you know, I like chaya greens. I don't think they're particularly high in oxalic acid. But, yeah, spinach is one of those ones... Mm, maybe um, get some brassicas or kale, you know, some of those things. <clears throat> Try Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, Liberty Nut License. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Oh, so you did try it, huh? Uh, you tried the Monstera Deliciosa. Brenton says, I love you. I garden 200 feet below the surface. Wow. Thank you. The Hive says, David, should I prune my banana mats? I'm letting them grow into small groves with four to five stems. That's fine. Three is usually the best. Five is okay. If, when they get bigger and bigger, if you cl if you start dividing those mats up and planting them out in singles, they grow way faster and you'll get better fruiting usually. At the Bonterre Mines. Oh, that's awesome. I've always liked mining. I always thought it was awesome i would i would love to see a mine when i was a kid i saw um the feldspar mines in north carolina with my dad he would take us there in the summer <clears throat> debbie says remind me what to spray on tomatoes to prevent splitting i don't know of anything that will keep, that will prevent splitting like spray you know spraying them with something Generally, they split because there has been a change in the amount of water they've received. Like, it's been really, really dry, and then it starts pouring rain. Like, right now, everything's really dry. And it's probably going to start pouring one day, and we'll get like six inches, and then all my tomatoes will crack to bits. This tomato has no cracks in it because there's been no rain for like, you know, there's been a half an inch of rain in the last three, four, five weeks. You know, the tomatoes look great. You get a big rainfall event, it's over, you know. Nachman says, did you call it a Q&A? Are there more people watching? Yeah, 137 concurrent viewers, I think, right now. Jonathan says, raw and lightly cooked spinach makes my mouth itch. It's terrible. Yeah, it's horrible for you. It's evil. Spinach is nasty. Spinach will kill you. What about carambola? It has lots of oxalic acid. Yeah, don't eat much carambola. But carambola doesn't burn my mouth like spinach does. Um, a caribola actually tastes good. <laughs> David says, I pretty much always use sweet potato greens for anything that calls for spinach. Yeah, I like that idea. The oxalates break when they're cooked. 
oxalics, the, the oxalic acid crystals break down when they're cooked to an extent. So if something's really high in oxalates, if you boil it, you can often break it down somewhat so it's, it's not so hard on your system. Charlie says, is petroleum jelly safe for okra and sunflowers when defending against ants? Yeah, it should be fine. It, it shouldn't hurt them. Yeah, I would take the tops off of the sapote seedlings in uh, when it's moist out. 555 says, one chaya plant or 20 sticks for the same money. What do you choose? I would choose the 20 sticks. Those cuttings keep for a really long time and they grow easily. Lovecat says, if you ever come to Southern California, I'd love to show you mines in the Mojave Desert you can go into. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Let's see how fast you can eat the tomato. No, I'm saving it for the family. We're gonna do it. We'll do a side by side taste test tomorrow, probably. Well, I better call this. I mean, we've still got more questions, but I'm not going to keep. I can, I gotta go. It's getting late. It's ten o'clock. So I'm gonna say. Goodbye. Thanks to all the members. Thanks to everyone who came along. Thanks for the super chats. You're generous, folks. But I must say goodbye. Goodbye. All my gardening friends Goodbye until we meet again I'm glad we're all on the same team Watching the good stream Anyhow, I should post a new video tomorrow, and I will catch you guys there. I hope you're enjoying all the extra videos and everything. I've been having fun putting them together. Um, it's It's been a lot of extra work, but it has been fun. I'm enjoying it. Um, I've been trying to up my game. I was encouraged by Scott while he was here, and I think I, I got more power. And I said, you know, this this is gardening season. I should really be pouring myself into the YouTube channel right now. So I said, you know, I, hey, I'm doing all this gardening anyways. I might as well film it. And I'll just come in when it's hot and I'll edit it. So um, I've had a cold this week. You can tell my I look a little droopy probably. My eyes are a bit swollen. But I'll be over. I'll be over it. And I'll get my power back. Maybe I'll even eat some spinach. No, I won't. Catch you all next time. Until then, may your thumbs always be green. <clears throat>